The views on a breath of fresh air podcast reflects the parties involved, and we encourage you all to use it as a conversational tool that will lead to personal studies of your own. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Welcome to a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Here with your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nakaz Gay. As a young person, Christianity can be so foggy, like smoke in the mirrors and so unclear. But we're here to bring you a breath of fresh air. JL! JL! I am Cicero, captain of the army of Jabin, king of Canaan. Can you hear me? Come, my lord. Come right in. Don't be afraid. I am being pursued by the Israelites. (coughs) And I need refuge. Would you happen to have some water? <coughs> of course. Here you are. <coughs> what is this? <coughs> Curded milk? I just need to lay down. Now let's get you tucked in. Thank you for your great hospitality. And if anybody asks you, if anyone is here, just just tell them no, okay? Please. Got it. Hmm. What can I find? Um, is there a sword? Um, oh, a tin peg. And a hammer. That'll do it. Has anyone seen Cicero? Come, I will show you the man you're looking for. Throughout the book of Judges, we have seen the up and down cycle that the Israelites have been on. We are now going to discuss Judges 4 and 5. In these chapters, we see Deborah, who was not only a strong woman, She was entrusted to be the judge over the Israelites and a prophet to them as well. As always, be blessed and enjoy. All right, welcome back to another episode of A Breath of Fresh Air podcast with your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nikoscape. Why did I say that just now? I don't know. Because I mean, they, they just finished hearing that. They just finished hearing that. Intro, like. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start off with the thought for this week. And it's kind of like two in one. But the first thing is, like, we as Christians, we use the word faith a lot. And I know we have podcasts dedicated to faith, but we haven't, we haven't done a faith podcast more. It is coming soon. But we use the word faith a lot. And, I'm, and to me, I don't think a lot of people really, they say they have faith, but they have more faith in themselves than God. Mm. Because here's the thing. We have free will. And when a lot of people pray, in my opinion, and I could be wrong because a lot of people do pray the right way. But when a, lot, when a lot of people pray, they say, Lord, I want this. Or Lord, you know, I want this. And they say, Lord, let your will be done. But in a sense, what they're saying is, Lord, let your will be done in us so much as your will aligns with my will. Mm. Versus where it really should be, Lord, let my will align with your will. And, and to me, it's powerful because like you have faith, 
but you'll have more faith in yourself than God. And like, sometimes you're praying for God for this thing. And you're like, I'm not getting this thing a lot. Why is this thing happening? But you still say you have faith. And to me, it's like, are you waiting for God? Or are you waiting for yourself? Because it, it, it's a slippery slope when we start talking about this faith thing. And then you, and then, because faith is giving everything to God and trusting in God. Even when you can't see it, you're trusting in God to make this happen. But are you still relying on your own understanding to get, to get there? And I don't even know if I'm making sense, guys. At least you could help me out if I'm, I'm digging myself into a hole. No, I mean, see, the, all right, watch this. Like, this one thing I mentioned earlier about when we was planning the wedding, it is stuff that I really wanted. Like, the shoes that I, what I mentioned. <laughs> like, it was stuff that I really wanted where I felt convicted that this wasn't the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. And I prayed about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I pray a lot, you know. But I was telling myself that, bro, you only feel this way because it's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Like I was making it in my own. I, I wasn't even listening for God, mm-hmm. you know. <clears throat> and even my wife, you know, I got to keep flexing it, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, praise God. But we, was, we were supposed to go on a trip mm-hmm. and we were about to spend um, the money for this trip. It was going to be a nice trip. And, you know, she, she told me like, man, you think I should do it? I was like, yo, let's just pray. And we prayed and just laugh at the Lord. We went for a ride. And she turned to me and was like, Do you really want to go? And I tell her, No, I just wanna, I just wanna relax. You know, she's <laughs> like, Yeah, me, me too. I, I didn't want to go. But it was like, we knew that we had to go on this trip because a lot of people was expecting us to go on this trip. Like this was like right after the wedding, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know, our honeymoon is gonna be months away. Mm-hmm. But it's like we felt we felt like this is what was supposed to happen. You know, this is what we wanted to do. And then, you know, it might've been a little bit of pressure in there, mm-hmm. but we prayed and we allowed the Lord to tell us what to do. But at the end of the day, there was still the thoughts in our mind that, bro, you should be going on this thing, you mm-hmm. know, but it was God telling us, yo, maybe you shouldn't, shouldn't maybe yeah. you shouldn't be doing that. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just glad that we were honest in that scenario because I, what I tried to do just now is give you two scenarios. One where I wasn't honest with myself and I mm-hmm. made a bad decision. And one where we were honest with ourselves and make the right decision. And at the end of the day, the Lord's will is perfect because he knows He knows all things. You know? Exactly. And like, and like how you said that too, because like when you have faith in God, God is going to answer your prayer in a way that you usually don't expect, but it's in a way better than you even could have expected. And some, like, and it, it comes in an unconventional way because, I mean, honestly, we won't serve, we serve an unconventional God, but we serve a God that who exists outside of our realm of thinking. Because I've prayed for things. And I did get it, but it definitely wasn't the way I expected it. Mm-hmm. But the crazy thing is the way I expected it would have led me down a egotistical, maniacal path that God's path was way more humbling, way better for me in the long run and, take, and took me in places that I couldn't, that, that opened doors for me that I didn't even expect them to open on the path I was going. And to me, like faith is just a, it's just an, it's just a super important thing. And to me, whatever you're waiting on God for, it's going to be worth it. Like, See, but, but one more thing, bro. I feel like it's a refreshing thing. Like it's, bro. It's it's hard to to submit, bro. Mm-hmm. I know when when in the conversation of marriage and relationship, that that is get a tense topic, bro. Because mm-hmm. like a lot of men feel like, hey, um, this lady should submit X Y Z. But at the same time, the text would tell you that. You ain't reading the whole thing in exactly. context because like it's telling you how you and it don't use the word submit. But if you listen to the characteristics and and, and what they telling you should do, you you essentially submitting back to your wife too. You understand? Mm-hmm. If it's just taking the form of love, mm-hmm. you know. But people are always talking about that. But it's always a sticky situation because men don't want to do it, women don't want to do it. But then it come a time and we have to do it for God. But mm-hmm. we just so we just want to be so independent. You understand? Mm-hmm. We just want to be so self motivated and self 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 that when it's time to do it for God, you can't even turn that off. But bro, <clears throat> when you actually get to do that, bro, you live such a, a stress, you live, it reduces your stress level. I'd say that honestly. Tremendously. Because you don't have to worry about making your decisions. God making your decisions for you. And all you have to do is let go. You know? Show up. All you have to do is show up, bro. All you have to do is show up and trust that what God telling you is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and so faith, bro. And I like what you said, show up and trust and do what and do what you feel God telling you. Because again, don't like, we ain't just saying no, just be lazy and do new nothing. Like, faith without works is dead. She's up to do stuff. But, like, Kashi's talking about taking that, the the stress part out of you beating your brains out, trying to figure out, well, what's my next move? What's my next move? What's my next move? And just letting God, like, work some things out for you. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, and, and that's really what it is, bro. So, I, I just, I just happy that I am aware of this, that it's, it's a lot of just hard decisions I had to make over the last year, to be completely honest, but... 
I put it in God's hands. And if bro, like with the wedding plan and all, I can't stress this enough. It's so much little things like, oh, should we buy this? Should we buy this? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's like, you can sell God. And I could have feel it almost instantly when it was like, no, this ain't making sense. Ain't it? And, and there's some things that I really wanted, bro. You understand? Some things I still buy and mm-hmm. I ain't even get to use, bro. Mercy. I, I had bought this card for Yana, bro. Mm-hmm. And I had to do the most to get it, bro. I had to put it on rush. I had to get a shift, ship to North Carolina. Bro, the day of the wedding, I couldn't even find the card, bro. And bro, and I, and I, I kid you not, it wasn't expensive, but <clears throat> it was money that I really needed for something else. But mm-hmm. I like, no, bro, it could be romantic, X, Y, Z. Bro, even something simple as that, where I didn't really know right or wrong, mm-hmm. but I asked God if this the right thing to do, because I wasn't sure if it would get there in time. Mm-hmm. And God was showing me, bro, no, this ain't the right thing to do. But then my mom was, was like, like, bro. I gotta have it. <laughs> right, bro, I can give you another example. I wanted to buy this box. It's like a decorative box or mm-hmm. whatever to put a gift in. Mm-hmm. And... I saw my wife, I say, I feel God telling me not to buy this off Amazon. But I'm like, bro, I am, I need this. Like this is like in the stuff that I literally need and there's no getting around it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like the week of, and I'm like, bro, I say, I say, why you think God telling me not to buy it? And she was like, oh yeah, I have a, um, I have a gift card to Amazon. Mm. And it's like, bro, here I was, I was trying to make sure my funds was in order, mm-hmm. you feel me? When it's like, it was other reasons. God was saying, bro, don't buy that with your money. Mm-hmm. We can use this card that someone gave us and you can buy it and get it, you mm-hmm. feel me? And so it's always a reason, but I was so anxious. Mm-hmm. I was so anxious, bro, I could have missed out and spent money and just, I would have had this card with money and nothing to do with it, you mm-hmm. feel me? Like, and so that, 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 that's, that's the thing about God, bro. Like, you never gonna know the answer, you understand what I'm saying? But it, it relieves a lot of stress, but you have to be able, you have to be willing to submit. Submit and listen for the actual answer. A little tangent, but... <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. So, this week, we are back in the book of Judges. Surprise, surprise. I mean, the title probably gave it away. <laughs> and so this week, we are focusing on the judge of Deborah. Shocking, not a, not a male. But also goes to show God does use females in the Bible. And this is like the, what, fifth one we're seeing that's being highlighted and exemplified. So yeah. like, I don't, like some people just say like, you know, God doesn't use females. I'm like, what are you talking about? Right. And, 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 and a lot of, I, I've heard women criticize the Bible saying that like women aren't really represented often in the Bible, which is true. It is very male dominant, the Bible, mm-hmm. not debating that, but it is not exclusively male dominated. You understand what I'm saying? And we do have well, women representation in the Bible, you know, and Deborah is one of them. We have a judge who is not, it's not even that there's someone represented, you know, this is a leader in the Bible. I'm saying that she's a full on leader, which you're going to get into, but like she's a full on, she was full on leading the Israelites during this time period. Mm-hmm. And she was, anyway, we're going to see. So pick it up in Judges uh, 4 verse 1. Again, the Israelites still evil in the sights of the Lord. And now Ehud was dead. So last week we talked about Ehud and Shemgar in this one line, but Ehud was the judge after Othniel. Ehud killed the king, stabbed him in his belly. Go back to last episode. It was a little graphic, but you know, Ehud, that was Ehud. And so, and again, we see after the 80 years, because Ehud reigned, was the judge for 80 years, and there was a time for peace for 80 years. After this, the Israelites, again, fell back into this in their cycle. They did evil in the, in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord sold them in the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who, re, who reigned in Hazor. Caesarea, the commander of his army, was based in Harosheth Haigoim. Wow. Because he had 900 chariots filled with iron and cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Wow. And they cried to the Lord for help. So now it's, it's it increasing yeah. it's from 18 on, now to 20. It's 20 years. And we're seeing the punishment getting a little bit more cruelly because before they didn't, we didn't really see a cruelly oppressed. Mm-hmm. Now we're seeing cruelly oppressed the Israelites. Now your punishment getting worse because your sins, they compound and y'all look like y'all ain't learning. Right. So now Deborah, a prophet. So Deborah, also a prophet. Yep. The wife of Lapadith was leading Israel at this time. Mm-hmm. So she's a prophet and she was leading Israel. She held court under the palm of Deborah. Interesting. Palm of Deborah. Let's see what she did there. Okay. It might have been even after another Deborah. I can't confirm or deny that, but I'm just saying palm of Deborah. Between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of, of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. And we see she's kind of doing what Moses did back in the day. Way back in the day. Deciding disputes. So, no, I was just about to point out up until this point, bro. This is the most detailed... Um, the book of Judges, they they going in depth as to 
the role that she played. And this is funny because, especially when it comes to women leadership in church, it's, it's kind of limited in our denomination, I'll say. I can't speak for other denominations. But this this lady, Deborah, did, did it all, bro. She was Not only was she a prophet, right? She was tasked with settling disputes, but also ridding the Israelites of whichever cruel oppression they were under at the time. And I mean, it goes by something we used to say like earlier on in the podcast, but nothing is like in the Bible for no reason. So like this story of Deborah and the detail that we're seeing, especially like describing who she was, it's here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't get this much detail about Ehud. Nope. We picked up Ehud like he was a judge going his way to King. For 40 years or 80 years. He was a judge for some time. 80. Yeah. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? And so, like, when we get all this backstory of who Deborah was and her prominence in the Israelite society, and, like, it's there for people to realize, like, hell, no, women also played a pivotal role in the society, helping them develop, and they also had, like, very meaningful roles. Like, she was a prophet. They didn't even call her prophetess. Like, she was a prophet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Straight up prophet. Talking to God, leading the people and their civil leader at the same time. So, she sent for Barak. Interesting. (laughs) I didn't even know that was like a name from the Bible. Yeah, yeah this was news to me too. <laughs> <laughs> I could be honest. Like, why, like, why aren't there stories about Barak and, and, and Deborah? Okay, she sent for Barak, son of Ab- Abinoam from Kadesh in the, of Nephthali. I heard someone say Nephthali, so I might have been pronouncing it wrong this whole time. My apologies. And said to him, the Lord God of Israel commands you, go take with you 10,000 men of Nephthali and Zebulun and lead them to Mount Tabor. I will lead to Syria... And the command of Jabin's, the command of Jabin's army with his chariots and his troops to Kishon, to the Kishon River and give them into your hands. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. So it seems like Barak, would you say lacked the faith? Mm-hmm. Or, what do you, or what do you call that? I mean, I don't know. You, you might have been scared. But, isn't, but, but, like, fair, but fair and faith can't coexist. That's true. That's true. So if he's scared, see, because this is the thing. He have faith that Deborah knows God and God is with Deborah. Mm-hmm. He have faith in that. But in himself, I know. You understand? Know like, if you go, I know I straight. You know what I mean? But if you don't go, I stay and reach her because I ain't going nowhere without you. You know what I mean? Because we know how this goes too. Mm-hmm. We know God raises up a judge. Mm-hmm. And the judge is successful. We haven't heard about a judge being <laughs> unsuccessful. So we know we know your story ain't gonna end here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We know you're gonna um get the Israelites back to freedom. Mm-hmm. So if you go, I go in. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I I get that. I get that. I get that. So she says, certainly I will go with you. But because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will dis- will deliver Syria into the hands of a woman. Mm. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. So she telling him, because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. And to me, I always say this be like, you, since you don't want to go of your own accord, you don't have to fake to go of yourself, this honor ain't even gonna be yours no more. Even though you was going to fight this guy. <clears throat> Bro, you remember when um when Miriam when they introduced Miriam as a prophet mm-hmm. in, in Exodus, right? Mm-hmm. It's like we didn't know she was a prophet. No. But they say she's a prophet, mm-hmm. but we don't know what she prophesied even, right? Nothing. All right, no, to not, my knowledge, right? So, but she, she clearly prophesied to them for sure. Right? Yeah. So we have Deborah, who is also introduced as a prophet. Mm-hmm. We don't know what you prophesied until this point. Straight out the gate. Straight out the gate. Straight so the you gate. can't even you can't even refute refute if she is really a prophet or not because here it is, and this kind of and this kind of um, supports the claim that Barack was. Lock fate mm-hmm. because now your honor is being taken away from you. Mm-hmm. You only go in just as a placeholder now. Deborah, who was a prophet, say, and a prophet is an intercessor, or sometimes they used to call it seers back in, um, uh, later on in the Bible, like um, someone who God speaks to, right? And you give them the message, right? Mm-hmm. Prophet, all right, or somebody who God tells you the future and you you prophesy that, right? So she go to Barak and say, hey, you God wants you to be the leader of the army. Barak was like, bro, I ain't going nowhere without you. Barak don't believe in himself. He don't believe in the power of God. That was like, I can go because truthfully, the show must go on. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Your honor will be taken away from you because this is the path. This is the path that this is the course that, you, that you're taking. And not to spoil, but that is what's going to happen. So for a fact, Deborah just prophesied twice. The Lord tell you to, to, to go and be the leader of the army. And <clears throat> um, later on, 
um, a woman is going to, to take the honor from this. And so that's, that's a two in one right there, you know? So uh, verse 10, uh, I think it's verse nine. Uh, I can go, by, but because of the course mm -hmm. you are taking, the honor will not be yours for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. Now Heber, the Kenite, had left the other Kenites, the descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law. I was just going to say, Mo Moses' wife was a Kenite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I remember that from. And pitched his tent by the great tree. He was a couple things. Yeah, she was a Kushite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zananim mm -hmm. near Kadesh. I hope I pronounced that right. But you know, is what it is. He, he was back in ancient times in, in, in a different in, language. In Hebrew. Yeah. This can translate to English. Who knows if that A should be next to that N and the an A and A together? Anyway, I digress. Yep. <laughs> when they when they told Sisera that Barak son of Abinoam had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned from Haraseth Hagoyim to Kishon to the Kishon River. All his men and his nine chariots fitted with iron. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's, at Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Mm -hmm. Barak pursued the chariots an army as far as Harasheth, Hagayim, and all Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the family of Heber, the Kenite. So <laughs> now we see they're actually going into war. Deborah is with them. And Deborah is instructing them, is instructing, um, what's his name? Why am I going blank? Caesarea? No, 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 no. Barack. Barack. De <laughs> Barack. De Deborah is instructing Barack exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And Barack is following the order. So essentially, Deborah is the captain of the army right now. You know what I mean? Because she was telling Barack, this is what you need to be doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I go with you. So now I instructing you. And guess what? Barack and the army do every single thing except kill the king. And if you ain't kill the king or capture the king, you did not complete the mission. Mm -hmm. And so now you can see, I know Barack a little nervous because he's like, bro, I got I to gotta complete the mission. But it was already prophesied to me that a woman would be the one to do this. Yeah. That's so, where coming from. Right. So you know you do all, you know you do everything. You already kill his entire army. The only thing left to do is to kill the king and you are done. You complete the mission. But the king was the only one that got away. And the king thinking now, I have a treaty with some people. I just got to get to them and I'll be safe at least for the night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so like one thing to point out too, and it's like a fact that's often kind of gloss over when you read in the Bible. But so we see he went into Jael's tent, right? We got there like in verse 18. Mm -hmm. And so back in the day when... Israel was a thing. They like the the females and the husband and wives they lived in separate tents. Mm. So I don't know if you remember when we went like in, in the story of Laban. Laban went to Jacob's tent, then he went to Leah's tent, then he went to Rachel's tent, then he went to the two maidservants' tents. Mm. So they all had different tents. So now Caesarea, Caesarea just finished fighting an army of men. So even though I have a treaty with these people. I think he felt it safer, not knowing the prophecy that's already prophesied about him. Mm -hmm. He felt it safer to go to the female's tent mm. versus the male's tent because I have a less chance of dying if I go to the female tent than the male tent. Mm. So that's kind of important to point out just I, as a historical <clears throat> context of why he probably chose the female over male tent. Yeah, I, I never even thought about that. I I, I, I I thought your boy might have even been dead or something. Like, <laughs> I was like, where he was doing all of this, but I was... but. but because, um, to add on to that, I feel like it was also probably less likely to find him in that woman's tent than exactly. to find him in the because men don't sleep. Well, I don't know if if it was like if it ever happened, you know what I'm saying. But it's more likely 
like you say, for the husband to sleep in one tent and the wife to sleep in another tent. So if a man could be in that tent, it, well, it's, it's just unlikely. Is all mm-hmm. I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Super unlikely. So now, um, so she covered him with a blanket. So then he says, I'm thirsty. He done with the mons. I'm thirsty, he said. <laughs> Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Hmm. He asked for water. She gave him milk. milk. <laughs> anyway. So then he says, stand in the doorway of the tent. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone here? Say no. And this just shows us how fearful he is. Because naturally, if I suppose, if you're supposed to be hiding me, Naturally, if someone it, it, comes and asks me, your natural response should be to, to say, say no. no. Yeah, but he's saying, you know what? I can't let this go unsaid. I have to say it. I have if to someone say it. asks for me, please say I ain't here. I'd be remiss if I don't tell you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am hiding. Please don't forget that. So JL's helper's wife picked up a tent peg mm. <laughs> and a hammer mm. and went quietly to him. While he lay fast asleep, exhausted, mind you, because he was mm. running for his life, exhausted. Yeah. Boy, he just finished fighting, just running for his life. He wanted water. All he had was milk. You know what I mean? Like he had a long night, oh. and you know he tired because truthfully, I if I know I on the run and people want to kill me, I don't think I'll go to sleep that night. No. Boy, I'm, bro, think about if you scared. Like think about when stuff on your mind, bro. Like you don't get, you don't really find sleep for real, for real. Like you might be up all night just worried. The man was farmish. You know that, or he just really don't care about life, bro. He's like, all right, I can deal with this in the morning. You know what I mean? But I think he just was so tired mm-hmm. that he just was like, bro, I gotta, I gotta get around. They make sure so he was exhausted. Oh, for sure. And then so now she grabbed this tent peg and drove it through his temple mm. into the ground. Mm. And he died. She pinned him to the ground. When you don't got no when you don't got no knife or something, you have to improvise. Like, what an improvision! I was like, wow, because she like I could kill him. I have to kill him. From when she ain't give him water, yeah, he she was trying to kill him from dead. She should know something she's, was up. She, 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 she trying to kill him from up. dead. <laughs> I need even question the water. I'm like, y'all should have water. Yeah, it's a whole city. Y'all ain't got no water. Give me milk. He should have known. Hey, he should have known. She's trying to kill me. Something was up. <laughs> <laughs> Something was up. But it just also shows that the prophecy had to be fulfilled. Yeah. Like, and it's so crazy too, because like, I mean, in like verse, what, eight, we didn't know how this prophecy is going to be fulfilled. Like, honestly, but I was first, I was like, oh, okay, so Deborah going to get him? Because right, we just, we just come from Ehud. Yeah. Like, I'm like, y'all judges on a roll. Yeah. And see, y'all, y'all, right, Ehud, he ain't going crazy. <laughs> so it's like, it's only fitting. We know what y'all judges is doing. Y'all exactly. come power. Y'all are the reason. Y'all defeat the kings, you know? And it's still specific, like, a woman. I'm like, well, the only woman we get mentioned so far in the last <laughs> while is you. So. Yeah, in a while. Like, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. So then, um, so we see on that day, God subdued Jab- Jaban, king of Canaan, before the Israelites. And the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabban, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. And I just, I kind of like how they like emphasize that because this is the first king that we said who oppressed them cruelly. Mm-hmm. And now we see they, after the leader of the army died, the king also fell and they also like, you know, fought, took up their rights and fought against the king and they eventually overcame him. And so in a biblical fashion, that we haven't had in a while, and we go to chapter five, we see on that day, Deborah and, Bar- and Barak, son of Abanim, sang this song. A little duet. And it's been a while since we've gotten a song that has been sung. And they uh, went full on, we are going to re- we are going to uh, recall everything in this song. <laughs> and we're going to give a little intro. So anyway, we're going to start this song. So when the princes in Israel take the lead, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Mm. Wait, hold on, bro. You think you think before translation this used to rhyme? But yeah, I don't know, babe. I just I just see my because you see you weren't but that I weren't but what instruments they were sitting Because I'm like back in the day they really had a harp. If they they had a harp, they had some trumpets. They had horns, yeah. They horns, had horns, strings, drums. They had drums. They might have some cymbals at this point. But they got everything, bro. They got enough. They just ain't enough no piano, maybe. No, that no, that was way later. <laughs> that was way later. And before the piano was the harpsichord, that harpsichord is a little harsh to me. <laughs> so, I mean, they had enough, bro. You know, I, I imagine flutes. They had flutes. I know. Did they have flutes? I imagine, I imagine in this, bro. I imagine in this, but. And I, then they, they ain't seen this in English. 
No. English wasn't a thing. So no. might have rhyme in Hebrew? That's, like that's what I think. Like, I mean, I know like not all songs gotta rhyme for real. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of a lot of songs don't rhyme. But I know this definitely don't rhyme. And I don't think any song we we come across has rhyme. No. Know? Maybe it might not have been a thing. It's high, highly likely or possible that it wasn't a thing back then to rhyme in songs. But then also before translation, it might have rhymed. It might have had a better ring to it. A better ring to it. Anyway. Um, verse three. Hear this, you kings. Listen, you rulers. I, even I, I can imagine that's a duet. Mm-hmm. Like Barack said one line and then Deborah said, hey, Listen, you rulers. <laughs> I, even I. I. <laughs> We'll sing to the Lord. I will praise the Lord, the God of Israel, in song. Just in case we wasn't, we didn't know what they was doing at this point. Yeah. Just in case we <laughs> just didn't in case know. Just didn't catch on that this was a song. <laughs> it's like when Disney just started. You said the music playing, the, the princess, whoever, just like twirling around, just started yeah. singing, pick a lady, but, I mean, a, a butterfly lance on their hand. And you're just like, oh, I'm like, okay, y'all about to sing. And hold oh, no, on, let's go back to my early, 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 early point. Yeah. Yeah. That a lot of these shows really, really just be biting off the Bible, bro. Oh, like, for sure. Oh, anyway, we ain't got to get into that. Way. A tangent for another day. So when you, Lord, went out from Seir, when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured, the clouds poured down water, the mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shemgar, look at Shemgar getting this, mm-hmm. getting this little, this little shine. Son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were abandoned. The travelers took winding paths. Villages in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah arose, is Deborah Stanza, mm-hmm. <laughs> until I arose, a mother in Israel. Mm. God chose new leaders when war came to the city gates. But did not shield, but not a shield or a spear was seen among forty thousand in Israel. My heart is with Israel's princes, with the ru- with the willing volunteers among the people. Praise the Lord. You who ride on white donkeys, sitting on your saddle blankets, and you who walk along the road, consider the voice of the strangers at the watering places. They recite the victories of the Lord, the victories of his villagers in Israel. This was like sports to them, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, at the water cooler, they talking. <laughs> I mean, because like, what else are you really talking about? Uh, no, true, true. It's the, true. This is the days before. Internet, for TV. Like, like this is the days before a lot. Yeah. Like, they had messenger doves. Yeah. I never heard of a white donkey, though. Like, I know. I never yeah, even yeah, seen that kind of I was trying to figure out, say, maybe it's the thing. Because the first thing I heard about white donkey, the first thing that came to my head was like the white horseman. I'm like, that's a horse, not a yeah, donkey. Yeah, a horse. I mean, but it's possible. Like, it's, you know what I mean? Like, they have white horses, but I just never even heard about that before. But I won't Google it, but anyway. <laughs> then the Lord said, <laughs> then, the, then the people of the Lord went down to the city gates. Wake up, wake up, Deborah. Wake up, wake up, break out in song. Arise, Barak. Take, they instigate this. <laughs> take captive, <laughs> your captive son of Abana, Abinoam. Do you think they actually tell a wake up? No, I know. <laughs> the remnant of the nobles came down. The people of the Lord came down to me mighty against the mighty. The son of Ephraim, whose roots were in Amalek, Benjamin, was with the people who followed you. From Makar, captains came down. From Zebulun, those who bear the commander's staff. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah. Yes, Issachar was with Barak, sent under his mighty command into the valley. I'm trying to figure if Issachar just never used to fight because they really sound like shocked that Issachar yeah. made their parents. <laughs> like, you know, when they're like, oh, even you now? Yeah, like you heard right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, it's so crazy because we don't really, Issachar really never gets shine, honestly. Yeah, a couple of them don't really get. That's not. Yeah, the mid, the mid. But it's funny, we say about Benjamin, like the tribe of Benjamin a lot, like lately. Like. Some problem people come from Benjamin, you know? Yeah. Because I think even Paul was a descendant from Benjamin. Oh, wow. That was his Jewish line. Okay. Man of mystery, Paul is. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, to me, it's be interesting when you hear, this is a little tangent, of course, but it's be interesting when you hear the people who come from different lines, because in the back of my mind, I just is imagine that like Everyone come from Judah? No, I just imagine that the line where you come from, you are similar to the patriarch of that line. Like so like someone with, with Levi's characteristics come from the line of Levi. Like Look even at all if, the priests. Like like <laughs> mind you, Levi was a homicidal dude in his younger years. You feel me? Like he was 
He was in the ring leader, you know what I'm saying? But he mm-hmm. surely was not a, I don't know, he was not a pacifist, I'll say. But like even, I, I like every time I hear about someone from the driver, Levi has been like, hmm, I wonder if he was like Levi. You feel me? So like the people like <clears throat> Naftali, Issachar, like people like that who you just don't hear. Like, like we don't even have no stories about them to know what type of personality they are. It, like like even Benjamin, like it shocked me that, Oh, oh, someone's from the tribe of Benjamin. Like, I automatically just think, like, y'all ain't gonna really be no popular type of people or, or no stand standout type of person because Benjamin wasn't, you know? But, you know, that's kind of, I don't know, that's kind of foolish for me to think of, but that's just my mind. Random fact too, Prophet. Jeremiah is also from the tribe of Benjamin as well. Oh, wow. I just did a quick Google search. <laughs> I was like, who else, from, who else from the tribe of Benjamin? So, yeah, Jeremiah. So, a whole prophet had a whole book written. Jeremiah's a really good book. Yeah. We'll get there soon. <laughs> you think so? Soon? <laughs> no. I would say soon. <laughs> we a year in and we were in judges. <laughs> Which is interesting too, like, put a pin in that, but it was interesting too, because like some people like, just fly over these stories and like to me it's just like important. Like some of the stories we highlight, I've never heard had any shine or just got lumped in with like certain stuff. Like people go to like Genesis is, was the book with the most stories, individual stories. People like run through Genesis in like three episodes mm-hmm. about a podcast. I'm like, I don't understand how y'all do that, bro. Like, like how? Like y'all didn't like can't enable as one episode, bro. Like exactly, that was like 16 verses. <laughs> it's like because I feel like it's so much to unpark in some of these things, bro. And just to discuss and like makes you think, and you're like, oh, what does this actually mean, and what's the ramifications of this? So, like right now, we're deci- we're, we're, we're dissecting a song. Yeah. <laughs> But some like, but this is the type of thing where people just really skip over for sure. Though. Exactly, Songs, this song. Lineages. They're like, uh, uh-uh, we we good, we good. Um, okay, so now the princess were with yes, uh, yes, Issachar was with Barak sent under his command into the valley, in the districts of Reuben. There was such a there was much searching of heart. Why did you why did you stay among the sheep pens? Did you hear the whistling for the flocks in the districts of Reuben? There was much searching of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And Dan, why did he linger by the ships? Asher remained on the coast and stayed in his coves. And the people of Zebulun, the people of Zebulun risked their very lives. So did Natali on the, ter- on, the, on, the, on the terrorist fields. So I guess it's also showing the importance of why I think Issachar was pointing out too. Because we see how some of these other tribes. They wasn't trying to get in that. They wasn't trying to fight at all. Yeah. We see Reuben wasn't into it. Um, Dan, Naphtali. They, not, not Natalia, and, and, and Dan didn't, didn't come either. So we see, like, they were like, okay, so that's why I guess Issachar was kind of pointing, like, hey, no, Issachar actually came. And so picking up in verse 19, kings came, they fought. The kings of Canaan fought. At Tanakh, by the waters of ooh, Megiddo, they took no plunder of silver. From the heavens, the stars fought. From their courses, they fought against Assyria. Assyria. The river Kishon swept them away. The age-old river, the river Kishon, march on, my soul, be strong. You can, like, you can, like even reading this, you can feel the translation <laughs> in it. You're like, huh, this, this, this seemed kind of abrupt. <laughs> Pick it up in verse 22. Then thundered the horse's hooves, galloping, galloping, go his mighty steeds. Curse Merzor, the angel of the Lord. Curse its people bitterly. Because they did not come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed be the woman, most blessed of woman be Jael, wife of Heber the Kenite. Most blessed be the tent dwelling, most blessed of the tent dwelling woman. He asked her for water and she gave him <laughs> milk in a bowl fit for nobles. She bought him curdled milk. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what curdled milk is? I just want to know. Do you know what curdled milk is? It's like pre-cheese. So I mean, in the in the in the in, in Judges chapter four, it just said, you know, she just gave him milk when he asked for water. But she gave him milk that's been in the sun a little too long, oh. and started to lump up a little bit. Oh. And anyway. he had a long night. But <laughs> he had a long night, bro. That's disgusting, bro. That is nasty, bro. <laughs> he should have known he's about to die. <laughs> you should know something was up. And then so the song continues. Now they still singing, mind you. Mm-hmm. They're still singing. Pick up in verse 26 in Judges 5. This is still a song. Her hand reached for the tent peg. Mm. 
and her right hand for the workman's hammer. She struck Cicera. She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. Mm. Out of feet he sank. He fell. There he lay. Out of feet he sank. He fell. Where he sank, there he fell. Dead. There gotta be the chorus right there. You can, you can, Not on a bridge or something. You can tell us a song from that stanza. <laughs> <Yeah. though. laughs> They're good. They're good. Pick it up in verse 28. I, I try to wonder when Barack is sing. This is all dead bread. It's all dead bread. That's that song. I know. But you know, he might have been doing this little piece. You know. Odd label harmonizing with it. Yeah, huh? Like the Migos. <laughs> he could have been like, he fell. <laughs> then he he lay. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Through the window, parents of Sarah's mother. See, this part we didn't know in Judges 4. Yeah. Behind the lattice, she cried out, Why is the chariot so long in coming? Why is the cloud of the chariots delayed? The wisest of her ladies answered her. Indeed, she, keep, she keeps saying to herself, Are they not finding and dividing the spoils? A woman or two for each man? Oh. Colorful garments as plunder for Caesarea. Colorful garments embroidered. Highly embroidered garments for my neck. All this as plunder. So may all your enemies perish, Lord. But may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. Then the land had peace for 40 years. That was a beautiful song, bro. Hey, give all credit to Deborah. I don't know what Barack really did. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> but I, I mean, I like that, bro. I like that. It's like to me, I feel like people sing in the Bible, you know, when, when it's so, like when it's extreme celebration, bro. Like imagine, remember when they had just left? Um, Egypt mm -hmm. And they sang I think Miriam Might have been leading that but, Yeah she lead the people In song Right And Remember They had just been Cruelly enslaved For like 20 years So now This is a cause For singing bro Like not even to be funny You could see They was really rejoicing And, and you could also tell That this is how They documented Certain things Like mm -hmm. Cause like <clears throat> I remember when I was a kid I was watching Blues Clues, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and, they, and they had made a song about the solar system. And <laughs> I liked that episode so much because, it, it, and this didn't rhyme. Oh, it did rhyme. It did rhyme. But they made a song about each planet at the mm -hmm. time. And <clears throat> it's just so strange. I know the episode he's talking about. Yeah, bro. And I could sing it word for word, but obviously, this have nothing to do with them. But <laughs> I never forget the order of the planets just because of that. Mm -hmm. And so. You can see how necessary songs are sometimes. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's factual, like, especially little kids, they remember things more in song. Mm. And, like, I don't even know, like, growing up, you could remember some of these songs word for word. Yep. Even songs, like, from then. From like then, now, I can still quote, like, yeah. sing the whole thing. Chorus, yeah. first verse, second verse, bridge again. Like, you know, the whole song verbatim, but mm -hmm. just, like, so etched in your memory. But, like, just growing up, like, especially I have aunts as teachers. I got, like, three aunts as teachers. I just know, like, if you wanted a child to remember something, you put it, like, in a song. Why do you think they, like, teach us the ABCs in a song? Mm. Just for it to stick. Numbers, we just learn them off your own. But, like, certain stuff, like, just, you, do, you learn in a song, you just, it just sticks with you. Like, think about all them songs we learned in song service growing up. Yeah. That we never had a piece of paper for. Right. That's true. And they just get never passed see down. the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you just, you just learn the songs. Just keep it with you. That's crazy. And, and, and it's even songs that... Like, it might be a parody song of a real song. And mm -hmm. We know it. People in the U.S. know it. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, that's just so interesting, the power of songs. I, I'm trying to remember, in the book of Deuteronomy, was there a song? Like, did Moses make a song at the end of Deuteronomy? No, Deuteronomy is just his speech. Yeah, okay. Because I'm trying to remember the last song we, we, we might have we come in contact, come across. I mean, because it wasn't, it wasn't like in this can, it wasn't like in our like normal stories, but we did talk about songs when we did the Christmas episode. That's okay. when we had a bunch of songs that pop up. Yeah. So <clears throat> overall, what I'm trying to say is like, this definitely is a memorial or like this is a time where they wanted it to be etched in history. You know, this is this is this was a good feat for for Deborah too. You know, and this is this is a good representation of women leadership in the Bible too because at this time this was they were so cruelly oppressed. You know, they weren't oppressed to the extent, but maybe they may have been oppressed with Moses, but they were cruelly enslaved and then we have somebody who was a woman who led the charge even when the man who was who got appointed to be the leader of the army chickened out 
she showed fearless leadership straight throughout. She prophesied, and then <clears throat> her prophecy came through where there was another woman who had no who, who had more allegiance to Sisera than she did the Israelites. You understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But she fed she fed God. I guess And she She understood The assignment And what was the faith Of this man anyway You know And so I, I, I You know I just I just I just really appreciate The song And you know That style of writing And just how they Document all of this At the end At the end of the day And so here we see Another I don't know If you have anything else To say I was just gonna correct My like my blunder so I just went And did a quick search So there was a song In Numbers When they sang When the well so they said, spring up, oh well, sing to it. Then the, the well, then the leaders like sang, sang or whatever. And then there was also a song at the end of Deuteronomy. See, because right. I, I, like, it was something so familiar. Because because I remember, what, what, what chapter in Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy 31, 19 through 22. Right, because this was right after the curses and, and God did kind of predict what was going to happen to... Um, and then in Deuteronomy 32, so, 1 so, to 43. Right, yeah, so that's what happened. Yeah, yeah so that's that big song. Yeah, right, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. give all the blessings and the curses, right? <laughs> and they say what could happen, if, you know. Yeah. And then in the song, they, they put it in a the song. They sing so it you, again. So, you, so it's like, I am going to predict what is going to happen to mm-hmm. Israel and then they put it in a song mm-hmm. and then truthfully part of that song is actually what they going through in Judges now right now right now so I don't know bro like I, I just feel like it, you know the Bible is a complete book that's something that we say all the time you know and a lot of times the arguments with people have for or against something in the Bible you could find evidence of it right in, in, in some of these chapters especially the, the non-popular ones when we were talking about a con that was evidence against covetousness covetousness is one of the sins in, in the Ten Commandments that don't have a lot of shine a lot of, like people rather talk to you about homosexuality abortion like uh, Christians in general when they make a hard stance against something they, they barely ever could talk about covetousness like no. barely ever and to me I, I... I don't think that's part of the devil's plan. Not to say that certain things aren't important. Like I'm not downplaying the severity of like abortion and uh, and that kind of stuff. But like to me, I think the devil wants you to focus more on these complex sins mm-hmm. or these complex morality issues over the ones that are so simple. Like he like no one no one arguing about stealing really and true. No one arguing about lying. Yeah. No one arguing about wanting what your neighbors have. But we arguing about these like. More complex things that you're like, okay, but like, there, there, it, it, it's so, I don't even know what to say about it. Like, you know, it's so like, almost like so subjective. Like, it, it, it's, it's choice. However you want to paint that picture, like, I don't want to get into that discussion on this podcast. See, see right. So, so, so what I, what I mainly trying to say is, bro, no matter, no matter how complex it is, right? Bro, if you, if you look, if you, you under the power of the Holy Spirit, if you study the word, bro. You can find evidence to steer you in the right direction on some of these things. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's stories like like the Akan where, where it go into covetousness, but a lot of people might brush over that story. Or, or sure. that, that's, that story just might not be taught, might be taught often. But there is things, the Bible addresses thing, these things in, in these stories. You understand what I'm saying? Women leadership, that's another thing addressed in, in the Bible. Like, I know some people... Who take hard stances against that? Like, I ain't letting no woman X Y Z X Y Z. Even in this story, bro, it is embarrassing that Sisera was was killed by the hands of a woman. You mm. understand? And that's why they document that it's the woman who do this X Y Z. This 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 chapter right here is very heavy on the women. They even talk about Sisera mummy. Mm-hmm. They barely even talk about Sisera in, in in this story for real for real. No, he was here to die. Yeah, he was just here to die. You know what I'm saying? Like they mentioning Shamgar and stuff like that. You feel me? Like, bro, like they they <clears throat> and I'm saying that's times when they could have been mentioned talking more about Cicero, who he is, XYZ, but that's not what the story the story is about. I am also reminded of, I think it was um Exodus chapter one or chapter two, when we had those two servants that um did not kill the Israelites. Exodus one. Right. They, yeah, that was our first that was, that was what they did with, with, right, with Peter LeBink. Right. And it's like you have you have times when um you have women who completely steal the show. We had male um male judge, male judge, male judge, etc. You have Deborah. Deborah come in hot, instant impact. They they um they they address all of her feats. They address what she come here to do, and they address how she executed. And then guess what? If you if you miss what she do, we gonna recap with a song. You understand? Big because song. because this is important. This is not to be missed. You understand? But at the same time, a lot of people still miss it. 
You feel me? Male and men and women. There are women who who have expressed to me how they read the Bible. It's just man, man, man. You understand? And then it's, it's crimes against women in the Bible. Obviously, this is God is not in favor of this, and God does not support this. But you read this, and 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 that's what you're seeing. And a lot of times, you you get turned off from that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, bro. Is but is is the things that you yearn for are also in the Bible, whether you see it or not. You understand, and you have to actually pay attention. That's why it's that's why it's important to read this this book from cover to cover and meditate on it. You know, and to just talk to God about it. You feel me? Because at the end of the day, everything we need is in the Bible. And if you feel like you need some more, you might need to break down the Hebrew and the Greek to get a full understanding of it. But at the end of the day. Everything we need is in the Bible, and mm-hmm. that's something we need to we need to reflect on. Because if it's something that we need, we have to ask ourselves, why do we need this? Is this getting us closer to God, or is this feeding our ego? You know, and that's something we really have to think about as humans. And it's I can say this from from a perspective of a man who I I don't I don't have a need to be represented. You understand? Because it's like it's such, it's just so masculine. You understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I have faith in God, and I trust that the Lord has instilled everything in this book. Every topic, every type of person, every situation that is necessary for me to get to heaven and for me to maneuver and understand the nature of God, I feel like it's in this book. And this is just one prime example of that. Every now and then, we see where the women of the Bible completely steal the show. In this case, it was Deborah and Jael. Deborah, a prophet, as well as the leader of the Israelites, and Jael, a woman prophesied to kill Sisera, the leader of King Chabin's army. With Deborah as their judge, the Israelites had peace in the land for 40 years. But after the 40, they turned away once again and were given over into the hand of the Midianites. But we'll talk more about the Midianites, the angel of the Lord, and the next judge, Gideon, on the next episode of A Breath of Fresh Air. Tonight's episode included voice acting by Ayana Albertson Gay, as well as your hosts, Earl Roberts and the Cars Gay. Remember to go ahead and research on your own in order to get a more firm understanding of tonight's episode. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can follow us on social media at A Breath of Fresh Air Pod on Instagram and B O F A P O D on Twitter. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week.